Did you know that BDSM and kink are healthy outlets for aggression, imagination, and attention? Hi, and welcome to The Partition, home of kinky wellness. My name is Dana Slosser, and I'm a sexual wellness coach that dives deep into all things kinky. I'm here to show how BDSM and kink deserves a rightful spot within the sexual wellness conversation. So, let's talk about it. Hey, and welcome back to The Partition. Today, we're going to be diving into some kinky wellness by talking about sexual addiction and pornography addiction. So before we jump into it, let's break it down. What is a sexual addiction? Well, according to the WHO, the World Health Organization, sex addiction doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Isn't that crazy? Like, it doesn't exist at all. According to the IDC, which is their little book of international classifications of diseases, excessive sexual drive can be found under compulsive behaviors or impulse control disorders, but it's not technically classified as an addiction. In their most recent document, they do include compulsive sexual behavior disorder as a diagnosis, but it does not include or use the addiction model. That's because there seems to be a great deal of debate whether compulsive sexual behaviors can be considered an addiction or not. And because there's so much commotion about this, sexual addiction is still not classified as an addiction by the WHO. But I, to, honestly, I think that's crazy. I think it's really clear to see that there's an obvious sex addiction um, that this is actually a problem. It affects thousands of people every day. We have support groups, therapy, we have courses. We have courses on how to overcome these addictions, how to help loved ones who are suffering from these addictions. And sex and porn addictions are tearing families apart. A few episodes ago, I know I talked about the book called The Psychology of Sexual Expressions by Grace Innings. And in one of the chapters, she talks about the devastating effects that sex and pornography addiction have on everyone involved. And because of this, I wanted to learn how I could help people in this position better, which is where I found how to quit a pornography and break a sex addiction course. The course goes over key steps someone would need to take to better their chances of overcoming sex and pornography addiction. The course was presented by a man named Kevin Seidel. Kevin uses his experience of overcoming his own addictions to help others overcome theirs. So in this episode, going through the key points that so in this episode, I'm going to be going through the key points that I learned in his course. So to start off, Kevin says there are four key things to qualify an addiction: compulsion, frequency, consistency, and consequence. For compulsion, he explains it as, do you want to stop looking at porn or having sex outside a structured boundary, and but every time you try, you fail? This would be a compulsion. It's an irresistible urge to do something. Frequency means how often are you giving into pornography or sex addiction behaviors? Is it every time? Is it every time you think of porn, you have to see it? Or every time there's a sexual temptation in front of you, you have to act upon it? Maybe this is something you didn't even know you were doing so often. But who can blame you? With the ease of technology, sex and pornography is at our fingertips and can arrive at our doorstep just as fast as Uber Eats. Next is consistency. Consistency stretches into patterns people can create. For example, say you take a loving spouse who's really loving at home, but every time they go out of town for business or whatever the case may be, they sleep outside the relationship. And this act only happens when they're out of town. But that's a pattern. That's a pattern that can be broken. And last is consequence. Will the actions you're about to do have negative consequences for you, your family, or the law? If your impulses blind you temporarily to the negative consequences, then you're definitely in the area for addiction. 
Just like any other addiction, sex addiction is hard to overcome. Kevin says that you're going to need an accountability partner. This can be your significant other, sexual wellness coach, individual therapist, or even group therapy. You can have whoever you want, but it needs to be someone you trust and deeply, deeply respect. This person needs to want to help you just as much as you want to help yourself. They are your cheerleader for when the road gets rough, but they are not your punching bag. You're going to want to pick a person who you can have a frequent or weekly conversation for at least an hour. It can be in person or it can be on Zoom, whatever works for you. But also it needs to be with someone that will just not forgive you, but also hold you accountable. So you really want to pick someone who loves you and is super strong and will love you in that tough love kind of way. Then you need to understand addiction and how it affects you. Basically, addictions are based out of the brain's use and abuse of its reward system. When it comes to sex or sex-related activities, there are three main chemicals that activate in our body. Dopamine, adrenaline, and oxytocin. Dopamine is what makes you feel good and relaxed, while adrenaline is that exciting and stimulating feeling. Oxytocin is that chemical that makes you feel bonded to the person we're having sex with. These drugs are addictive because it makes us feel good and happy. There's a lot of cases of addiction when it comes to pornography addiction that they don't even know how much they're hurting themselves or the people that they're around until it's too late. For someone who has a sex or porn addiction, they need to identify out of those three stages which one they are drawn to the most. In order to get a grip on it, you need to call it out. Then you need to start looking at your earliest sexual stimulating moments. What we were exposed to as a child affects how we grow up. You need to take some time to answer these questions, though. When thinking about our childhood, it can be painful and some things can pop up unexpectedly. So talk with your accountability partner if you need support. Therapy is also a great place to start with things like this. But some questions to ask yourself, at what age were you exposed to pornography or explicit images? How has pornography or sex progressed throughout your lifetime? When did everything about sex change for you? Write your thoughts down on a piece of paper. And when thinking about our past, it can often show up in blocks or pieces. So don't try to fill out the whole story right at one time. It takes some time for the whole story to even resurface. You can't rush this process, and trying to rush this process will only delay your healing. So, of course, with any addiction, when you first cut off the source of supply from whatever you're getting your rush from, you're going to feel some withdrawals. And this can be the same with sex and pornography addiction. So you need to write down on a piece of paper what you're feeling, like what withdrawal symptoms that you're feeling but you also need to take notice if you're suffering or struggling with any other side effects like depression, anger, loneliness, anxiety, low self-esteem. Write down any major changes you are experiencing. This also includes physical, mental, emotional, or, or spiritual changes. Writing things down is a really good way of getting things out of you and onto paper. This also gives you a physical thing. And holding things physically matters to some people. Like for me, I'm a big write things down, look at it to do, like not necessarily to do list so much as like blocking times out to process through things or to do specific stuff. But writing things down also lets you have a conversation with yourself. Other practical tips he gave to protect yourself are identifying what websites and keywords that you struggle with. The good news about this is that there are lots of softwares out there that can limit your access and restrictions for different websites and keywords. Really, there's an app for everything, so that's positive. However, if you're acting out on urges outside of a relationship, then you're going to need to increase the transparency when it comes to your phone or even your laptop, really anything that has a connection to Wi-Fi. But here too, you can download certain softwares and block out stuff, but think about giving your phone to your accountability partner every once in a while. Phones really just make it too easy to access pornography. And 
even if you don't go on pornography websites, even going on social media can be a, can be triggering because like really it's social media. There's, there's sexually explicit images everywhere and it can be enough to put you into a relapse. So yeah, give your phone to someone that you do trust when you don't need it. Another practical tip is writing down regular situations that you might need to protect yourself against and finding the solutions to these situations before they actually happen. So for an example, and a small example that he gave would be walking in a different direction in the mall so you don't have to pass the lingerie store. The smallest of things can trigger an addiction Again, one major focus of overcoming sex addiction or pornography addiction is calling the temptation out as clear and black and white as it is. You can follow this into writing down what turns you on, what you're tempted by. When when are you tempted by these things? Or is it a certain time of day? Is it a certain action? Seriously, you need to start writing down what turns you on and what you're tempted by in order to protect yourself. You can start brainstorming it. And when you do find yourself in these places where you're tempted, you can either find a distraction or call your accountability partner. Or if you want to get a mantra or a saying that can help you to stay motivated to fight through temptations. You're, but regardless, you're going to need a mantra to get through your toughest moments. Like at the end of the day, there are some ugly moments where, you know, maybe your accountability partner is just not there for whatever reason at that one random second. Get a mantra, write it down everywhere, put it on the walls, put it on the mirrors, put it on your phone, put it on the computer, just keep put it anywhere where you think that you or even places that you don't think. Just put it everywhere around your house to remind yourself of whatever mantra that you pick. But also by writing down the places and the people and the temptations and the situations or whatever the case may be, you might be able to see that there's a pattern going on here. And again, patterns can be broken. You just need to find them first. Sometimes we're so looped into a pattern that we don't even think it's a pattern. We just it's just so ingrained into her day to day. And porn addiction is especially tricky because at the beginning, you don't think that you're really hurting anybody, right? You're just getting off, like who cares, whatever, right? Once and then twice and then every day and then multiple times a day. And then, you know, every you just need to do it or you need to see the images. Like any addiction, it spirals out of control quite quickly or in it or it sneaks up on us. And once you do identify those triggers, then you can take those keywords or whatever they are to the filters and the software that you have on your phone and your computer, and you'll be able to block those out from there. And when any type of addiction gets out of control, you're hurting more than just yourself. You're hurting your significant other, or if there's children involved, family, friends. Addiction is ugly. Another thing that you might find when you write all of these down is how you can see the repetitive patterns of how your behaviors are affecting your relationships. And addiction can undermine what a healthy relationship is. A healthy relationship is one full of love, care, respect, but truth, accountability, comfort, honesty. If you're doing something and you're not telling that person is because it will hurt their feelings. Do you know that? And what ends up happening, even though it's not the spouse's or significant other's fault, they feel like they did something wrong. They feel that they're not sexy or that they're not attractive or they did something themselves. So it hurts so many people. A big part in the healing journey is having the accountability to address your actions as indeed hurting someone. So if you do have an addiction and you are in a relationship, you have to acknowledge that you are putting that person in pain. If you can't acknowledge that you're putting your partner in pain, then you won't be able to continue down the path of healing. That has to be one of the first steps is that you acknowledge that you have an addiction and that those addictions are hurting others. And this next piece of advice goes directly to the significant other or the spouse of someone who has an addiction. And it's do not ask specific questions. 
Like what type of person were you looking at or what like specific details? Like you don't want to know. You don't want to know because getting those small insignificant details will cause you long-term anxiety. Like you'll start questioning yourself, self-doubt, and it's going to hurt your self-esteem. Even if you're tempted to ask, it's really, really in your best interest not to. And that's just for your own mental health. It goes without saying. Telling someone that you have a sex addiction or pornography addiction is hard. It's going to be hard. It's a hard conversation to have. But just because it's hard doesn't mean that you don't have that conversation. So when you do tell your loved ones, and you will, some things to keep in mind are just to be considerate of distractions and outside influences. Like pick a time and place where everyone's home. No one's coming in and out from work. And communicate that you are looking for help and that you do want to overcome this addiction and you want help from them. Just the acknowledgement of I have this addiction and I need help. And don't get defensive if they get upset. You need to just listen to them and let them respond how they're going to respond. Learning about a loved one being addicted to anything is upsetting. So you need to be patient and honest in the little things as well as the big things. But all together, everyone should be focusing one day at a time. Addictions do not need to be permanent. Focus on achieving your daily goal. And then from there, you'll be able to set up weekly and monthly goals. Keep track of your goals and be honest with your progress. It's not going to work if you just keep lying to yourself about these goals and progresses. Like write it down and stick to it. To be accountable, you must be vulnerable. And Kevin said a really, really good line. He said, take comfort in knowing that your brain is healing the longer that you are free. Sex and porn addiction is not a game. If you feel that you're struggling with this, please seek professional help. There are people out there who want to help you. In the comments, I'll leave some links for help. Addiction is painful. And so is healing. Know that you don't have to do it alone. If you or anybody you know suffer from sex or pornography addiction, I hope this helped. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think that sex and porn addiction should actually be labeled as an addiction? But that's it for me. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time. And as always, stay kinky.